box of two airfoils. If anybody can guess what kind of airfoil it is, they get a prize. I'll give you a hint. That's either asymmetrical or symmetrical. So you can study it, look at it, get, come up with the answer. Uh, uh, leading edge. And I'll show you later on this tail rotor on the back. That leading edge has like a, it's almost like a sandpaper. It has a golf ball effect where it holds a pocket of air on the leading edge to help lower the resistance because with less resistance means more speed for the aircraft. The long little tabs you see on the tails, those are our trim tabs. Those are adjustable. So the mechanic can adjust those tabs to how the blade tracks in the air as it rotates. So this one's a counterclockwise system. Right, this is called our leading edge. And on the side over here by our mid crew, that's the trailing edge. So as the air goes over it, it starts creates the lift. It's not air on the bottom, it's on the top. Because when we pull pitch, we change the angle of the blade, which is called our angle of attack. And as we change the angle of attack, it creates more lift because the air has to travel faster on the top side of the airfoil to create that lift. <laughs>
because now it's flapping down with it, getting more angle attack. And the advanced sign is letting it go by flapping up, reducing the angle attack. They must be in a little bit. The Rolls Royce engine they made, I'll throw out its weight. This thing weighs 175 pounds. And it's made mostly of titanium for the heat because of the heat that it generates. Uh, you want to take a ballpark guess uh, how much horsepower a 175 pound engine can produce? 1200 pounds. Okay. <laughs> Where's the shoe? <laughs> All right, a little lower. So this one will do 435. This one's called a reverse flow because when you think of like a turbine engine, like a jet, it comes in the front and out the rear. So this one comes in through these inlets into our compressor. We have it's like a three-stage scroll compressor. So it takes the air and it compresses it so much that I forget what the PSI is, it compresses it too. As you know, as you compress things, do they heat up or cool down? So just the air alone the compressed comes out of the compressor at 525 degrees Fahrenheit. Just it's being compressed. There's not even fuel introduced at that time. So it comes through our compressor, which is the section here, the forward section. Then it comes out these tubes to the back. This is our burner key. This is where it gets mixed with atomized jet fuel. When it gets atomized jet fuel, it goes through the next set of wheels, which is our turbine wheels. Those turbine wheels are basically like a windmill. You can turn them by hand. They're not directly connected to the compressor. So what turns those wheels is just the hot gases passing through them like a windmill. And those, in turn, go through the gears into our transmission, which turns the main rotors. And it also comes out this skinny shaft here at the bottom, all the way back to our tail rotor. So 70% of that air uh, is produced by the compressor is for cooling the engine, 70%. 30% of it is used for the actual combustion, which gives us that 425 horsepower. Because it's so hot in there, they have to use that 70% to cool the engine to keep it cool. It operates, you have to help me with this conversion, but it operates about 600 to 700 degrees Celsius. This is normal operating air. So it needs a lot of cooling which it gets from that air. After it passes through all the turbine wheels, it cap captures most of that power and then comes out the top in our exhaust port. And then this center section here is called the gearbox. And that's for turning our fuel pump, our governor, generators, alternators, all the accessories to keep the aircraft flying. All the extra parts. Questions on the engine so far? We're common downfalls. I'd say if you just neglected that, the maintenance, I'd say you'd come up with your governor first, which maintains the speed of the engine at 100%, and then after that it might be your fuel controller. Uh, the fuel controller is what keeps it at either idle or 100%. It introduces the fuel to the burner can, and eventually, after many, many, many hours, your turbine will be after that. That's the FA. We're on a, what's called a progressive inspection. So we do maintenance about mm, once a week. Now when you think of maintenance, it'll do, it'll do a minor thing. If there's a two types of program, they call it progressive and they do major. So a major one would be like, okay, it's got 1200 hours now. It needs to go and have the engine inspected, parts replaced, rotors balanced, all that. Which would take about two to three weeks. So rather than the aircraft being down two to three weeks, they might do one week, okay, you need to replace your governor. And that takes three hours, and then they're done. So that way the aircraft's out of service a shorter amount of time than they'll call, rather than an extended period of time when they're doing a lot. Talking about airspeed early, so what, what is a typical you know, cruising airspeed for the uh, This one will cruise about 105 knots, okay. and roughly about 120, 125 miles an hour. I know that conversion I'm talking about. Yeah. You will. Not For those in my class, you will before the end of the year, I promise you. Yep. Alright, so then elevation. Elevation. This aircraft, uh, it can fly because of the engine, the way it's designed, they degraded it. So as you go higher, the air gets thinner and cooler. Uh, so this engine will actually increase its horsepower 
because it's derated for sea level. So as we go up higher, you can actually pull more power out of this engine and we can get to uh, 16,500 foot with this certified core. Because of the oxygen requirements, we don't, can't go up above 14,000 or else we have to be on oxygen. But normally our bed crew in the back are already hogging that. So. That's, they call that the service ceiling, so if you ever see that. <laughs> so, this is our vertical fin. This, while we're flying, helps keep the aircraft straight through the wind. It's kind of like a wind vane, like you see like on a, a windmill or something. This one's offset 5.5 degrees to the right. So that way, when we're above 45 knots, the aircraft, it, it unloads the pressure from the tail rotor. So it doesn't require as much tail rotor to keep it straight because this is a lot of the work in forward flight. Unfortunately, when we're landing, it's also a big sail for crosswind because it'll catch it and try wind bank into the wind. This is our uh, tail rotor. It's mounted also kind of like that on a tickling hinge but it's 30 degrees offset instead of exactly 90. And that's to help reduce the amount of flapping, which is this motion here, in flight. By doing that, you're offsetting gyroscopic precession. Instead of the full 90, you bring it back to 30. So it reduces the flapping quite much. Yeah, sometimes they This battery in here. You guys might be able Yeah. But we managed to start the aircraft. We could not. We grabbed that. You want me open that door so you can look at it?